Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the 10 most secluded towns in the USA. Now, this is going to be interesting because there's like, <laughs> I remember watching The Hills Have Eyes, you know, and that was based around this like very small community, like some in, hidden somewhere in some like you know, off the beaten track, some really isolated place. And if anyone hasn't seen that movie, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's 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 horrific. And I've, I've always wondered like, are there actually towns like that where they're just really isolated? You know, unless you're from there or, you, or you're, you've got family that live there or friends, you would never know they existed. They, you know, their numbers are probably in the low thousands, maybe even hundreds. Do these towns really exist? And this video is by World According to Briggs. He does a great job of these types of, uh, you know, top 10 things in the USA type, type videos. I really enjoy them. I really wanna see, you know, how small, how isolated, you know, how secluded does it get in the US in terms of towns? And, uh, you know, just <laughs> what kind of interesting things can I expect to see? So yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Let's do it. What is going on everyone? It's time to do another most secluded video. The last time I did a most secluded town video, I got a ton of suggestions on locations in the US that are more secluded than the ones I had listed and probably should have been included in the video. So I wrote down the suggestions from your comments. I did my research and I came up with the best 10 suggested secluded towns. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments on this one as well, and that's fine. Comments, likes, and even dislikes help the channel. YouTube looks at interaction and all three are interactions. So it's cool with me. Comment all you want. Tell me how I'm wrong. I love it. The rules of this list are simple. The town or location has to have at least 100 people, has to have a post office, and has to be far away from a real town. So before you do, stop Sounds typing. Reasonable. We don't need to hear about the truck stop right outside of some <laughs> town you live in that has a truck trailer stop. park and it's got five trailers and a cornhole court and it's in the Oklahoma Outback. Don't need to hear it. That being said, let's take a look at the top 10 most secluded towns in the United States. Let's go. The viewer version. Number 10, Kremlin, Montana. Kremlin is a very small town in Hill County. The town is only about 282 acres wide, and it's just got 100 residents. The whole town is a farming community lacking a grocery store or a gas station. You'll have to drive 45 minutes if you want those luxuries, and that's in Big Sandy. Yes, Big Sandy is a town in Montana, not a nickname we gave my sister when she quit going to the gym. <laughs> if you want to go another two hours away, you can get to the big city of Great Falls, Montana. That's like a giant metropolis by Montana standards. The community is so small, there's only one school and a fire station that doubles as the post office. Can you imagine that? The fire department races over to your house to put out a grease fire in your kitchen because you have no idea how to cook while they're punching holes in your drywall to put out the fire that has now become electrical fire because you have no idea how to wire a house. And the chief says, oh, hey, I got some mail for you in the truck. Comes back and goes, this one's from the IRS. Looks like you're getting an audit. Number nine, St. Paul, Alaska. St. Paul is the first of three Alaskan towns that made this list. St. Paul is a small town of about 500 people on St. Paul Island in the middle of the Bering Sea, and it's hard to get to, both figuratively and emotionally. Figuratively, it's a long, rough plane ride that sometimes requires a couple days of waiting for the weather to clear. Emotionally, that comes from a subscriber. She said she knew a girl from St. Paul that said the flight and the boredom took an emotional toll on her. That's why she never went back. The flight to St. Paul is a three-hour flight over some of the roughest waters in the world. You know wow. when the flight attendant gives you that safety briefing? They could get to that one part about the water landing and just say, in the unlikely event of a water landing, don't worry about the flotation device, you'll be frozen solid in four minutes after we hit the water. Is Alaska really one of those places that, you know, if you wanted to disappear, like a lot of people I've noticed in TV shows, like Breaking Bad, Jesse, like when he wanted to disappear, he went to Alaska. Could you literally go there, build yourself a house some in, in the forest and never be seen again if you wanted to? Is that possible in Alaska? Or is it quite densely populated now? 
Number eight, Point Lay, Alaska. Point Lay is on the Alaska northwest again. coast of the state of Alaska. Like many other towns in the northern region, there's no roads to Point Lay. Any food, any supplies the town needs, they have to be brought in by plane. Back in the Cold War era, it might have been a little bit easier. The Air Force actually had a small installation there for some satellite dishes, but those were taken down around 2005, 2006 after not being used for like 10 years. The population in 2000 was around 250 residents. As of 2015, the population has risen up to 270. They gained 20 people with only about 85 residents in the workforce. So that's not good. Only about a third of the people actually working. Point Lay is a native village with about 80% of the population being native Alaskan. This right. thing is way out there. There's nothing around it except ocean and land, mostly frozen tundra. Crazy. So to live in a place like that, you've got to be pretty much self-sufficient. You've got to be able to like farm land you know grow crops build stuff because if you can't do it yourself chances of getting someone in to do it are slim right <laughs> Number seven, Hewlett, Wyoming. Almost every city in Wyoming that isn't Cheyenne, Casper, or Laramie is relatively secluded, but you definitely have the extra secluded Hewlett. The population as of the 2010 census was about 385 people. Now it's estimated to be around 400. That just tells me there's 400 people in Wyoming that don't like having company. Hewlett has one school, a few places to eat, a grocery store, and a golf club. Yes, Hewlett has a golf course. Does a town in the middle of nowhere really need a golf course that is actually larger than the town itself? Maybe they like golf. <laughs> it makes no sense. The nearest big city in Wyoming is Casper, and that's about three hours away. Number six. Dalhart, Texas. Dalhart is one of the larger secluded Texas, towns with little over 8,000 people as of 2017. This city sprung up from an old railroad junction back in like 1901. The city is in the very northwest corner of the state and 80 miles away from Amarillo and 40 miles away from the closest Walmart, which is by Texas standards, really bad news. The good news is they do have a great burger place called The Grill. They serve these giant hamburgers, they're great. This guy really has been everywhere in the US. Like, like, how has he been to this place too? Number five, Mackinac Island, Michigan. Now, this one made the list because it's sort of secluded and a subscriber wrote me a very lengthy email about going to high school here with a four person graduating class. It was like a mini novel. There's so many words. Mackinac Island is home to about 500 residents as of the 2010 census. The closest mainland town is Mackinac City towards the south. There's a couple other ones that might be a little closer, but that's like the main one. The only way to the island is by ferry or private boat that's in the summer, or snowmobile or airplane in the winter. The island does have an airport. There are no cars on this island. No Residents and visitors have their choice of transportation. Horse, bike, or walk in the summer. That's in the summer. In the winter, everyone drives snowmobiles. This one made the list because it has no cars Crazy. also. The subscriber said the island isn't that far away during the summer. During the winter, it's- Is it that there's no cars allowed? Or can you physically, is it not possible to get a car, you know, into this place? I just can't imagine a town with not one car in sight. Can you imagine that? seems much further away. I kind of got the vibe from that, that it's just the weather keeps people away from the island. Anyway, people ride their snowmobiles everywhere. During the winter, parents pull their kids to school behind sleds and drop them right off the front door at the school. I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> Number four, Stahican, Washington. Stahican is within the Wenatchee National Forest. This place is tucked away to say the least. Stahican has only about 100 residents and the only way to get to the town is by taking the ferry up Lake Chilean, a long hike, a horseback ride, or by flying into Stahican in a seaplane. Since there's no roads here, those are your only options. And I imagine you could swim it, but that's a long swim. I don't know if anyone wants to swim that. I've never been here. I know I've camped on Lake Chilean before and this place is so far up the lake, I didn't even know it existed. I was there three days, no one mentioned it, knew nothing about it. I saw the seaplane, didn't know where it was going. It was really interesting. This place is so far away from everything. It has zero cell service, zero. Whoa. If you wanna drop off the grid, this is your place. I now, like see. I said, I haven't been to that town, but I heard it's really nice. The pictures look nice. I'm going to go there this summer. I'll have pictures for you in June or July, I'm sure. Very interested about this place. The last time I was ever somewhere that there was no cell service, gosh, I really am struggling. Like, I can't think of anywhere that I've 
been recently where there was no cell service, I would feel so isolated, man. Even though it's probably, it'd, it'd be a good thing to just disconnect for a while. Maybe because I'm a city boy, like just not being able to call someone or access the internet on my phone would be really unnerving. <laughs> Number three, Haynes, Alaska. Haynes is a pretty tricky place to get to from Washington State or any of the contiguous states. Probably the easiest way is to fly into Fairbanks or Anchorage, drive through the Canadian provinces of British Columbia and the Yukon Territory. You'll be driving about 15 hours, that whole driving portion. Then once back hours. in Alaska, you'll have to take the Klondike Highway to get to a ferry that will take you to your final destination of Haynes. Haynes has the basic necessities for a town. However, if you want anything extra other than the necessities and alcohol, you'll have to go to the closest city of Juneau, which isn't any easier to get to. It's just a little bigger. Like a lot of places in Alaska, weather plays a major role in travel. And Wow, look at this. Is this ice or snow? This is such a cool picture. Stop typing. Not everyone only travels during the summer. I got that on a recent video and someone said, well, if you're worried about the weather, just go in the summer. Yes, that's a great idea because everyone's life's that simple that no matter what happens, they'll just put it off till the summer. <laughs> Number two, Supai, Arizona. Supai is the capital of the Havasupai Indian Reservation, located within the Grand Canyon and about five and a half hours from Flagstaff. Ooh, the community is home to only awful. about 208 residents and is the only place in the U.S. where mail is still carried out by mules in the contiguous United States by the Department of Agriculture. And it's a really? good thing this place is so remote and hard to get to. I am sure if it was closer to, say, some main road, it would be overrun by visitors and a-holes. Look at it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It is actually stunning. Wow. Most people that make this trek do so with a certain amount of respect. You're not going to see people in beach chairs with beer like you would at the river or Lake Havasu. It's a lot nicer. Just hard to get to. And number one, Yellow Pines, Idaho. Yellow Pines is located right outside of the Payette National Forest, and as of the 2010 census, the population was only 32 people. And I know 32. that's below the requirements for this list. Kind of broke my own rules. But here's the catch. In the woods surrounding Yellow Pine, they have a bunch of people living in cabins and trailers. And the estimate for the 2020 census is that they'll get to about 100 people. The closest town with They're any chain restaurants or grocery yet. stores is McCall, and that's three hours through the canyon. This is another three. place where in the winter, you seem like you got a little further away from everything else. This is also one of those places that if you live here, you feel like you're camping every day of your life. This is also a good place to move to if you're trying to escape your past. So they don't yeah. have any internet, television, or things like that. You might have internet, but it's that satellite internet, and, you know, that's so slow it might take you three weeks to load a website of any news. It's that far out. Wow, man, this is crazy. All right, so that's my... Awesome video. I really enjoyed that. That Yellow Pines place, to think that there's only 32 people in that specific place. And then in the surrounding area, there's only like another 60 odd people because uh, Briggs said that it's you know projected to reach 100 people in the next few years. I mean, that's literally, that could literally be eight families and that's it, you know. And he said that the nearest town is three hours away and not a three hour drive, three hours through the canyon. So it's not like you can just drive at 80 miles an hour and get to the next town. Absolutely mental to think that, you know, in this world where just technology is pretty much everywhere, or at least everywhere, you know, in the big cities, to think that there's still places that you literally, you know, he said that you literally cannot get cell phone service, you cannot get mobile internet. You are literally cut off from, you know, the, the world in a way. I find it really cool. I kind of would love to visit for, you know, an hour or two just to have a quick look around, maybe spend a night in some of these places. It would be really cool just to actually unplug because I'm super like, you know, because obviously I'm a YouTuber, I'm, all, I'm always online. It'd be nice to detach for a day or two just to actually feel what that's like because yeah, I can't say I've ever done it before. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.